Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, for the last few weeks I've been pretty busy over on my new channel, Research Flat Moon. And as a result, I haven't put out a lot of videos on Bob the Science Guy. Well, I thought that I would re-release some of my new work from the new channel over here on my main channel and get it a little more exposure. Now there's a link to my new channel in the description of this video and I would appreciate it if you would follow that and give me a, a sub over on my new channel and follow me there. So enjoy the presentation and I'll see you again soon. Today we're taking on the second flat earth proof from Questionable Education's website and that is that if the earth was curved aircraft would have to descend in order to conform to the curved surface of the earth. In other words, the argument that Quantum Eraser is making is that aircraft left on their own would continue to fly in a straight line. In order to conform with the curve of the earth, they would actually have to continuously decrease in altitude. Let's go ahead and explore this and see how aircraft actually do fly and why this is flawed reasoning. So cue up the music and let's go. Let's go see what questionable education's confusion about flight is. Since the Earth is, as we are told, I always love it that they put that disclaimer in as if there's some sort of a plot out there, a sphere of 25,000 miles in circumference with a radius of 3959 miles, then pilots traveling for one hour had a typical cruising speed of 500 miles per hour. And by the way, points travel in knots, not miles per hour to simply maintain altitude would have to constantly adjust their altitude downward to compensate for the curvature and descend on an average of 27,089 feet every minute. Well, first of all, this is a basic misunderstanding of what a plane's altitude is. A plane's altitude is the distance above the ground. It has absolutely nothing to do with the shape of the earth, whether the earth is flat or spherical, 39,000 feet above the ground is still 39,000 feet above the ground. And as the plane flew along at cruising altitude, if it was flying at 39,000 feet at the start of that hour and flying at 39,000 feet at the end of the hour, it didn't have to climb or, or descend at all. It just maintained 39,000 feet above the ground the entire flight. So there is no descending involved here. But let's humor him a little bit and have a look at a few things. So even though he puts in some interesting numbers here, he's starting from a flawed understanding of how aircraft fly. They fly a set distance above the ground and maintain that distance. The reason that they maintain that distance is that is where the plane is most comfortable given the speed, the characteristics of its wing, and its angle of attack. First of all, let's have a look at the forces acting on an aircraft in flight. Now, this is a very typical small aircraft. There's a couple of key points here that need to be noticed. The reason that this aircraft is imaged with its nose pointing upward is this is the way airplanes really fly. They have what's called a positive angle of attack. The aircraft is traveling along this line. The wing hits that wind coming this way at an angle. And there's a reason for that. It increases the amount of lift. Now the four forces acting on an aircraft, the first one is obviously the thrust of the engine and the drag of the cross section of the plane. Now this is what you would consider wind resistant. Now the force of gravity occurs perpendicular to the surface of the earth in this direction. Notice that that is not perpendicular to the wing. Likewise, the lift that counters the force of gravity is also directed perpendicular to the wing, not the ground. Now, interestingly enough, you'll notice that the Earth is pulling the plane downward in this direction. There's a component of that pulling the wing down and backwards. Likewise, when you look at the lift, the main force of the lift to counter the gravity is in this direction. 
But notice the direction of the lift. It's actually aft of where the gravity is being countered. So there's actually a little component of lift that is pulling the plane back and adding to drag. The cross section of the plane, the rivets, the struts, and everything else, those have to do with what's called parasitic drag. The induced drag is the drag created by the lift of the wing. Now the misunderstanding from questionable education and the rest of the flat earth is how aircraft actually fly. They seem to envision that this airplane, if left alone, will continue out this direction. You can tell that because they look at gyroscopes and what they do is they look at the aircraft in relationship to a fixed position in space. This is the true flight path of an aircraft because the aircraft stays at a fixed altitude, the altitude that it is trimmed to fly. If the aircraft were to fly in a straight line, in reality what would happen is that the aircraft would steadily increase in altitude above its original flight path. So it's, if it starts off at 39,000 feet here, it may be at 60 or 100,000 feet out here if it continued in a straight line. So as you can see, aircraft do not dip their nose to follow the curve of the Earth. In reality, what they do is they don't continue to climb to maintain this artificial straight line that the flat earth seems to think they need to maintain. Interestingly enough, it's the plane's engines that keep it aloft. Once the aircraft is properly trimmed for a certain altitude and speed, as long as the thrust of the engine does not change, it will maintain that altitude and speed. If you turn the engine off, Surprisingly, it will maintain the exact same speed. It will simply begin to descend. That is in response to the constant downward force of gravity that needs to be countered by the lift of the wing. So once you have an, your aircraft trimmed at a certain speed, if you add thrust, you will maintain that speed, but you will climb. If you cut the engine off, you will maintain that speed, but you will sink all the way down to the ground if need be. So. Even though he goes through all this elaborate and somewhat erroneous math, Quantum Eraser's entire argument is built around a basic misunderstanding of altitude and how aircraft fly. Again, we see the misuse of the Modus Tollens argument. If Earth is a sphere, P, then aircraft would have to dip their nose to follow the contour of the curve, Q. Aircraft do not have to dip their nose to follow the contour of the spherical Earth, not Q. Therefore, the Earth is not spherical. As we saw in the previous example, this is based on a flawed argument. Aircraft do not need to dip their nose to follow the contour of the curve. They simply maintain their altitude above the surface. And the plane does that based on the aerodynamic forces acting upon it. So the Q, as questionable education puts it out, is flawed and incorrect. Therefore, the entire argument is flawed and incorrect because it's based on a false consequence. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. Join us in the next episode where we look at the Bolivian salt flats and how it is used as a flawed proof of the flat earth. Take care, guys. Too deep for me